Hello guys, Andy Raphael from eTechnics here and um, it's been a while. Uh, we say that every single time that we do a video. Uh, <clears throat> it does seem that a YouTube channel and the videos in general have lacked a bit and I can only apologise for that. There is one main reason though. Um, where I used to live, um, which is obviously where the office is, uh, I was on 50 meg internet. I'm now on like 5. Uh, so not much I can do about it but it does hinder obviously filming high definition uh, video reviews and all these little videos and trying to upload them to YouTube. YouTube then decides to stop the transfer even though it's got this new uploader that you can resume transfers with but that never works and it's just a nightmare. So I am sorry but things will improve because um, the internet is looking at getting sort of sped up to um, have a 10 meg 10 meg um, upload which would be fantastic it means that I can do more HD videos and I can upload them in like you know 20 minutes instead of seven hours uh, because my upload is 448 kilobits per second great so whenever we sort of you know leave you guys and we don't produce anything for a while um, we do try to come back with a bang and that's exactly what we're hoping to do today now be warned I'm not gonna delve massively into this because I can't. Um, what we're actually looking at today, as you've seen from the title, is Asus uh, Motherboard FM1. So it's the new architecture from AMD, uh, Lano, um, Lano, however you want to pronounce it. But there is an NDA that AMD have put into place uh, that basically restricts us talking anything about the performance or anything. So I can't even show you the processor. I could show you the socket, but I'm not going to. I'm going to tease you with that. But I am going to show you <coughs> the board, the box, the, the usual sort of thing. <coughs> One thing um, I will say is you ha I'll have to apologise for. If you hear the door slam or you can hear the birds outside or a dog barking, I, I am sorry. But at the moment it's like 30, 32 degrees here. Um, I had to have the window open. That fall there makes a door slam. and yeah. So sorry for that, but you know I'm not going to sit here sweating my bollocks off. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd open the window. Right, so enough of me talking. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this is all about, the F1 A75M Pro. We're going to look at the accessories, we're going to uh, look at the board and exactly what it's about and um, just really give you a preview of this board because the NDA does lift in a couple of days and we want to obviously do you know a review for then showcasing the performance and delve a lot more into it so i'm just going to go through the basics really so it will give you an idea of exactly what's to come from asus in the form of these uh, f1a75 motherboards because there's the m the v and um, this is part of the pro series which is great there goes the door um but yeah hopefully it will give you an idea of what asus are doing sort of lately as well as hopefully what amd are going to be offering but not in too much detail. So I'm going to take you off the cam, uh, off the tripod, and uh, we can have a look at this uh, this box. And that door's really doing my head in now. But there you go. Right. So let's have a look at the box to start with. Wait for the lovely autofocus to kick in. There we go. Right. We've seen boxes like this from Asus in the past, and the same sort of styling, um, which is very very nice. So we've got the Asus logo. It's the F1 A75. M Pro. There is a V Pro as well, which we know a couple of other websites have done previews on. Um, but as far as I know, there's no videos of any of these boards um, on YouTube, so that's uh, good news for us. At the top right, we can see some of the main features. Now, these are the features that Asus or Asus have put into this board. It's nothing to do with AMD or Lano or anything like that. These are Asus features. So we've got the Digi Plus VRM, EPU, and the TPU. So basically for your efficiency and, and the best performance as well. Down here, this is where AMD kicks in. Got the AMD chipset, A75 FM1 socket. Uh, it's part of the AMD Vision, as we all know, that's what all they're sort of going on about lately. It's Windows 7 ready, that's good. And once again, it goes through like Digi Plus VRM. It's got the UEFI BIOS, so we have shown you the GUI BIOS before from um, Asus, and it's we think it's fantastic, so it's good to see that it's got that. Um, great for sort of novice users as well as advanced. The TPU, as I say, for the best performance. EPU for the efficiency, and it's got USB 3, which, as we know, is 10 times faster. So nothing else really on the box apart from it telling you that Asus are the best selling and most award winning motherboards in the world. Turning the box over, as you can appreciate with all sort of motherboard <coughs> boxes, they are sort of 
plastered full of information. So straight away we do get a first sort of glance of what the board's going to look like. And uh, it just sort of details everything on there of where the APU goes. So I'm not going to show you the socket, but I am on here. So there you go. You can see what it looks like, but head over to eTechnics.com. We've covered loads of news on it. You can see what the socket looks like there. These are the main specs, so I'm just going to take my time with this so you can have a little read. Uh, it's got the HD6000 series uh, GPU built into the APU, the A75 chipset, the memory support, 4 gig DDR3 at 1866. It takes up 64 gig, which is amazing, especially if uh, obviously this is aimed at sort of HTPC light usage. Is anyone really going to need 64 gig? But there you go. Expansion slots, we've got a nice variety, two PCI Express X16 slots, one X1 slot and a legacy PCI. We've got multi-GPU support, and this does support Crossfire X uh, using the two slots. Storage-wise, we've got six serial ATA 6 gigabit per second connectors that support RAID 0, 1, 10 and JBOD. Uh, the usual sort of LAN gigabit, 8-channel uh, audio, be good if they could uh, spell channel, channel. Um, some great uh, translation there, good old ASUS. Uh, USB, you can see that there's four USB 3.0 ports, two at the back, two at the front, because this has got a native header on, which we will show you, um, and plenty of USB 2.0 ports. Down here, it just really reiterates the same point as HDMI, SAT 6G, USB 3, UFE, auto tuning, the world's best selling and most award winning, talks through the auto tuning, UFE, EPU, TPU, and a Digi Plus VRM, so lots of info there. The only other thing that you will find in the box is the barcode sticker, which just sort of talks through the socket FM1, what the main support and features are, Crossfire X Ready, that kind of thing. So, opening this up, we can see there's no motherboard in there. Where did it go? Oh, I think I'm going to end up taking the door off because you could probably hear that keep slamming. But the motherboard's not in, in here because we have been playing about with it, trying to overclock it, and we've had some great fun. But I'm going to show you what accessories come. Um, you get the I.O. panel, which I'm so disappointed with this. It's got this spongy stuff on it. But it's, oh, it's just bland and boring. Obviously, it's better than just grey, but it is sort of uh, silver. Bear with me two seconds. There we go. Stop the door with an NZXT chassis. Right, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's bland and boring, but it's shiny. It, it would have been nice if it was black or blue to match the motherboard, but there you go. Especially if you've got a nice looking case, you don't want that in the back of it. We've got a user's guide, which, as with sort of all Oasis guides really, it does talk through quite a lot, and the main specs are in there and everything as well. We get the driver installation disc with a case badge sticker for anyone who puts them on their cases. So we also get, I love these, um, two right angled serial ATA connectors and they are sort of black and white and I've, I've, got, I've actually got this on an Asus Fusion board uh, that I use for a server and I just love the look of them, uh, black and white, sort of reminds me a bit like Michael Jackson, sort of the white socks, black shoes, no? So yeah, that is, uh, that's the accessories, so um, I'm guessing now you're waiting for the actual motherboard, so... I have hidden the CPU, um, the socket, so you can't really see much and you can see what I've hidden it with. I've hidden it with the Noctua NHD14, so uh, nice and subtle I think, um, you know. But it does, it's good in a way because where we've put this absolutely hench huge, massive, gigantic, ginormous, whatever you want to call it, cooler, um, you can see that obviously you can fit the, the latest and greatest, biggest, most efficient coolers on the market onto this board. So, I'm just going to sort of take you on a look around the board. So, we can see this is where our CPU socket is under here. And you can see there's our processor. I'm not going to tell you what it is though, but there's our processor. You can't know what it is, not until the NDA lifts. Um, you probably can. You can probably guess what it is anyway. You all know what sort of uh, what processors are coming out with um, the A6, the A8, have a guess what we've got, comment below, I'm sure you'll all get it right. Memory slots, we can see that we've got four, and um, blue and black colouring, really like that, and the whole board is sort of blue and black, as you can see with the connector 24 pin over there. Um, DDR3, up to 64 gig as said on the box, and um, it does accept up to 1866 megahertz, which is uh, really nice. 
It's got Memo K as well, which we can see over here. Here's our Memo K button, and there's a little LED down there as well. If I can zoom in, no, auto focus. There we go. There's a little LED just in there, and we can see the EPU and TPU switches up here to enable it. You can obviously enable it in BIOS, but um, for ease of use, because we use all our motherboards on a test bench, they're just there, sort of ready, waiting, waiting to go. So cooler-wise, you can see, once we've actually got the memory in there, there's a little bit of clearance. Obviously, you're not going to be able to have the likes of high, um, sort of, you know, Kingston HyperX, that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, the low-profile stuff, brilliant, but the normal, you know, high-profile stuff, not a chance in hell. But there's still quite a lot of sort of room around the CPU socket area, which is nice. You can see that we've got a 8-pin power connector over here. Turning it around a little bit, I love the blue on here. I just think it's really, really nice. It's like a sort of cosmic -y, shiny, it looks good enough to eat kind of blue. Um, so, yeah, we've got this passive cooler over here around sort of the VRM area. And turning the board around, you can see that there's no cooling over here whatsoever because it's not needed. You see, we've got our CMOS battery just here couple of fan headers, there's, there's a couple sort of scattered around, you can see that we've got that one over there for the CPU cooler which we have got a Y splitter connecting our two fans off this. You can see 24 pin over here, another fan header and we've got our SATA ports here, there's six and they are all SATA 6G and that's all provided by the um, A75 chipset. Front panel connectors are just down here and we've got USB 3 native header, USB 2, we've also got a COM port, not quite sure why, but there you go, some people must still use it. And we've got this fancy little cooler down here as well, which uh, obviously underneath there is the A75 chipset and it's tiny. Um, as with all sort of AMD products these days, they are getting smaller and smaller. You can see that we've got our jumper here. Expansion card wise, as said, we have got two PCI Express X16 slots, 2.0 X16 slots, which it does say right there. So you can have two graphics cards in here in a Crossfire X configuration, no SLI, I'm afraid, but um, Crossfire X, no problem at all. We've got a PCI Express X1 slot just here and a legacy PCI slot here. Obviously, you can use your own graphics cards in here, but this board has got onboard graphics as well on the actual processor, HD 6000 series. And you can do a hybrid crossfire where you can actually put in another 6000 series of the same GPU and crossfire it with the graphics that's on the APU, which is really, really nice and one of the main sort of features of this board. So what we're going to show you now really is the last bit. Just going to sort of pan out so you can see the micro ATX form factor and you can see sort of how big this cooler is in comparison. Obviously you're not going to end up using something like this, you're going to end up using something a lot smaller. This is just an extreme really. Uh, but we wanted to show you anyway so you can see what it looks like and we wanted to hide the socket and the processor. Though I'm sure you've already guessed what it is. So here lastly is the I.O. panel. So lots of various different connectivity options and for obviously your peripherals as well as your displays. So we've got, starting up here, a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port two USB 3.0 ports, optical SP diff, HDMI, VGA and DVI, another two USB 3.0 ports, there's even a sticker just in case you don't know, two USB 2.0 ports, gigabit LAN supplied by Realtek, and the eight channel analog audio. So pretty much everything you need. Um, four USB 3.0 ports, which obviously do sort of back power to USB 2.0. The two 2.0 ports are over there as well. And then obviously you've got all these headers, um, USB 2.0, 2.0, 2.0, 2.0, and then 3.0. So you're not exactly short of <coughs> connectivity options, uh, to say the least. So I'm just going to stick you back on the tripod. And I'm going to sit back down. Ugh, right. So yeah. Um, <coughs> We've given you a look at the board, uh, the box, the accessories. Hopefully it's given you an idea as to what ASUS are doing at the moment. Obviously it's got some unique features on this board that the likes of the Gigabyte MSI boards haven't got the EPU and the TPU switches. 
uh, the UEFI BIOS, which we've used the Gigabyte one. It's it's not really a BIOS. It's a Windows application <coughs> that mimics the BIOS. And whilst that's it's nice, and especially if you've got a touchscreen touch BIOS, you can obviously you know use that. But it's not a proper BIOS yet. Obviously, it's going to be implemented. But Asus have already sort of you know gone to that market and already have their GUI BIOS out and it's fantastic. We've got it on the Crosshair 5 formula, we've used uh, used it on the Fusion board and it just seems to be you know, really sort of uh, becoming a hit with consumers now. Um, especially novice users it's something really really easy for them to use when they're using the basic mode but you can always switch to the advanced mode as well. We haven't shown you the BIOS today because we have shown it before and for a preview it's not something um, that's going to be fantastic and the fact that it's going to show you what processor we've got. And we can't have that because AMD will go spare. So that's really it. I'm going to leave you on that note. And hopefully um, we'll see some comments below this video. And uh, you'll be able to tell us if you think you know what processor we've got. And then when the NDA lifts in a couple of days, we'll be able to confirm it and show you the performance of it at stock. At overclock and show you exactly how far we can overclock in terms of the CPU part of it and the GPU. And because when we're actually overclocking the APU frequency, it is going to be doing sort of both syncing together. So we should see some really good results in benchmarks like 3D Mark Vantage and 3D Mark 11, uh, which is obviously one thing that this has got over Sandy Bridge, 3D Mark 11, DirectX 11. Um, so yeah, that's some fantastic news as well. Either way, I'm going to leave you uh, with with that thought really of um, how you think this is going to perform, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of days, hopefully when we have another video up of the performance of this board um, as well as a more detailed look and we'll show you the socket, the processor and so forth. Remember to go to etechnics.com if you are watching us on YouTube because we will, um, we've already got a preview up um, with lots of pictures of this board and uh, in the next couple of days we'll have a full written review as well so it's not just the video side of it, we do cater for the written as well. So um, for now that's pretty much everything and uh, I'll leave you with that. So um, yeah this was the Asus F1 A75M Pro and uh, I'm going to go have some fun and overclock this bad boy now. So uh, until next time, see you later.